No one knows from whence it came. Legend goes that it began innocently enough. Local politics, the warm bask of attention, the occasional flicker of a television light. It was a heady time, but then it grew. It wanted more. Without benefit of foresight, we sent Barbara Boxer to the Senate, where she took root for the next long 18 years, basking in the glow, becoming more and more bitterly partisan while she became shockingly less and less effective. Soon, her elitist self-image grew so that it overwhelmed the capital and drifted west. Westward, to tell us all how to live our lives. Why our hard-earned money should go to her to spend. She quit working for us and worked only for herself. Raising job-killing taxes, time, time and time again. But she tells us she's the friend of the taxpayer. I like to cut taxes for the middle class. But she's voted to raise taxes on things like Social Security benefits and gasoline and voted 11 times against removing the marriage penalty tax, proclaiming her cap-and-trade bill would clean the environment, indifferent that it would take already painful jobless numbers and make them dramatically worse. That's where you'll have a little bit of an increase in electricity prices. Even President Obama says electricity rates will skyrocket. And the Wall Street Journal says it is likely to be the biggest tax increase in American history proclaiming that her vote for the massive spending bailouts actually stimulated the economy instead of just dumping our money down a dark, dark hole. To stimulate the economy, you do increase government spending. But since this stimulus, unemployment in California has climbed to over 12 percent, the worst since the end of the Great Depression. Our national debt is now over 12 trillion dollars. Homegrown terrorists opening fire and killing soldiers on an American military base. Foreign terrorists trying to blow up an American airplane on Christmas Day. And what does Barbara Box see as a national security threat? One of the very important national security issues we face, frankly, is climate change. What? Preaching her liberal, partisan, elitist ways on every issue, though hardly any on either side of the aisle agree. She talked and talked and got nothing done. You know, do me a favor. Could you say Senator instead of ma'am? Yes, it's sir. just a thing. I worked so hard to get that title, so I'd appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yes, Senator. So from where I sit, Madam Secretary, you are not listening to the American people. You are not listening to the military. You are not listening to the bipartisan voices from the Senate. For 18 years, it was part of our landscape, our lives. It could not be stopped. Until one day, a five foot six inch fireball said, This isn't about talking, it's about getting something done. Her name was Carly. She was a receptionist at DJ's hair design. Well, once she was. That's how she worked her way through Stanford and got a degree in medieval history. Then came UCLA Law School, where she quit after one semester. So it was back to receptionist. This time at Marcus and Millichap. They encouraged her to reach a little higher and look into the business world. So she worked her way through an MBA, followed by 20 years at AT&T, then Lucent Technologies. One day her phone rang. A little company named Hewlett Packard was calling. Seems they'd become lethargic and stale, needed a fireball. Carly Fiorina became the only woman to ever lead a Fortune 20 company. While the rest of the tech world suffered through the dot-com bust, Carly got things done. She leaned the company to profitability, and HP doubled in revenues to 88 billion. Then she added jobs. Carly became one of the most recognizable business leaders in the world. She moved, she shaped, she accomplished. First the obvious, then the complex. And she did it with a smile. Only in America could a medieval history major, a law school dropout, and a full-time receptionist become the CEO of one of the largest companies in the world and have the privilege to run for the U.S. Senate. Only in America. 
These are remarkable times. They require new and remarkable leadership. Our choice could not be more clear. Someone renowned for pulling people together, or a bitter partisan known for pushing them apart. Someone who has successfully led one of the largest organizations in the world, who is known for getting things done, or someone who has spent 18 years in the Senate and only passed three tiny bills. Boxer only passed three bills in 18 years. Three. One named a local courthouse. One named part of a river in Virginia. And the third brought California some money to retrofit bridges. Three bills. In 18 years? One who has spent her career in high technology? Who can help us develop the vital jobs of the future? Or one who has spent the last 30 years as a career politician? doing so little. A problem solver, a problem causer. One who is calm and confident, or one who is, well, not so much. A lifelong fiscal conservative, or one of the biggest spending liberals in the Senate. One who has accomplished so much, or one who has accomplished so shockingly little. All these real problems and big challenges, lots of talk in Washington, but no solutions from Barbara Boxer. Why? Maybe because she's been a professional politician her whole adult life. Maybe she's forgotten how the real world works. Those of us who do live in the real world know we need a lot more common sense and practical problem solving and a lot less hot air. Let's stop sending Washington more of our money, and let's make sure they spend our money wisely and well. Let's focus on the most important things first, creating more jobs here in California by encouraging innovation, entrepreneurship, and small business owners. I have faith that working together, we can actually get something done. <laughs>